first of all, for just having me a part of this program. This is the most amazing program technology I have ever seen. Yeah, can you please tell, talk to the audience just a little bit about what BioCybernaut is? Well, the simplest way is to say that a BioCybernaut is to inner space what an astronaut is to outer space. So what does that mean? Well, an astronaut goes on an adventure in outer space. A biocybernaut goes on an adventure in inner space, into the depths of her mind or his mind. It's amazing. So at this program that we're doing here, this is the Deluxe Alpha One. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what is the Deluxe Alpha One and what is Alpha? And I know there's Beta and there's Alpha, and why do we want to be in one or the other? Well, the simplest metaphor is to think of the different brain waves as the gears of a car, a manual transmission car. Delta's like first gear, Theta's like second gear, Schumann is like third gear, Alpha's like fourth gear, Beta's like fifth gear, and Gamma is sixth gear. So you have a six-speed car. But most people live their lives driving in first gear or fifth gear. And if you drove your car that way, that would be like Delta and Beta. If you drove your car that way, you'd have low gas mileage and high repair bills, mm -hmm. shifting from first to fifth and from fifth back to first. And so many people run their brains that way. They're either asleep, and they got there by maybe taking an Ambien, or some kind of sleeping pill. Then when the alarm goes off, they wake up really tired, they down some coffee, put themselves into high frequency beta, and then they're full tilt boogie jamming stressed all day, and at night they shut themselves down again, and they don't spend much time in second, third, or fourth gear. And so the equivalent to low gas mileage and high repair bills is low productivity and create low creativity and high medical costs. Many uh, people say that stress is the basis of at least 80% of all disease. Mm -hmm. And beta is high stress. In fact, there was one time at the request of the federal government who'd given me a large grant, this was a National Institute of Mental Health, they wanted me to do beta training just to prove that it wasn't something about being in the chamber, you know, and hearing sounds. And so we did mood scales before and after the alpha training and mood scales before and after the beta training. Well, if alpha went up, anxiety, unhappiness went down. If beta went up, people became anxious, irritable, angry. And so this is not a state that you want to hang out in. It's useful to have access to. For beta is good for the routine performance of sort of non-interesting tasks where you need focused attention to detail, but it's not a creative state. It's not really a fun state. Beta increases are associated with increased anxiety, increased anger, even hostility goes up with beta. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I already, so we're on day seven right now, and the last day we have two more chamber sessions, and I already feel way more creative, more articulate, I would say, just more efficient with how I speak and, and what's kind of going on up here. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other benefits of actually going into Alpha? Well, if I may say, um, your smile is brighter, your energy you. is brighter, you, you look lovelier, <laughs> and uh, this goes along with raising your Alpha and also goes along uh, with doing the deep work, the forgiveness work, the worst case scenarios, uh, because everyone is weighed down by traumas from their past. The traumas may be minor in a grand scheme of things, but what matters is how the person was affected. If you have a gifted person, a gifted child, they're going to be more traumatized by, shall we say, a minor event than somebody who's not gifted. And they're also likely to brew on it and hold on to it, and it'll impair their happiness and their performance. Well, unless they forgive and get rid of it. Yeah, so I know we have in front of us, we have some of the charts. Mm -hmm. This is actually from day six. Yep, yesterday. And could you just briefly kind of show us 
what exactly this is and what alpha might look like because obviously alpha and beta there's all different frequencies so that's what we're kind of looking at right here sure well uh, this these are your raw of brain waves the raw EEG and the channels are left and right occipital 102 C3 and C4 are the centrals T3 and T4 are the temporals and F3 and F4 are the frontals and they are here you can see on the model of the head occipital to the back of the head which is back here centrals at the top temporals at the side and frontals at the front of the brain now as we zoom through here every uh, screen here is one minute and the slightly darker blue lines are one second. Mm -hmm. And so here you were doing your first mood scales. So we zoom through there. Now all of a sudden, at one point, you close your eyes and these big alpha waves surge. You can see right here, mm -hmm. the big alpha waves. And we also have another way of looking at them. Here's your eyes open and you can see the eye blink. And here we go into the eyes closed. Now we can actually put the alpha in uh, so the alpha in each one of the channels is extracted and is written on the page in blue. And so we can also look at the uh, delta, the theta, the Schumann, um, the alpha, the beta, and the gamma. It's all there. So awesome. So okay. The brain, so the brain's the only organ in the body, right, that does not have a feedback mechanism. Wow, that's so, absolutely correct. <laughs> so yeah. literally what you've created is a way for the brain to have feedback in real time. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking at here is obviously what that feedback was. Yes. So you're able to look at different data points and analyze in so many different ways. Now, what can someone do, right, like how, when someone comes here, mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. What's a, what's a great way to help improve alpha? Obviously, everyone is different, mm -hmm. but what do you see that's an overall way, or even for someone that hasn't come here yet, what's a good way for someone to actually go into an alpha state? Well, two different uh, questions. Um, now, people come in, people are different. Some people who are very high stress need to learn to relax. People who are depressed or low energy need to learn to activate because alpha is highest naturally in an untrained way when you're in a middle state of arousal mm -hmm. if you're in low arousal sleepy drowsy depressed you're often slow but also if you're in a high arousal anxious fearful angry your alpha is also going to be low mm -hmm. so somebody who's high stress needs to relax to raise alpha and somebody who's depressed drowsy tired needs to activate to raise alpha. Now that's just natural. Once you have a reasonable amount of alpha, and you have quite an abundance here, then we turn the alpha into sounds, musical sounds, flutes, oboes, organ music, clarinet, saxophones, and each note has uh, the ability to reflect your alpha from different place on your head. And so the notes are bum, 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 bum for the occipitals and centrals. And you hear those as flutes and oboes. The same notes, bum, 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 are for the temporals. And there you hear them as clarinet and saxophones. Beautiful. I love it in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so wonderful. And as the alpha instantaneously gets bigger, the sound for that head sight instantaneously gets bigger. The, the alpha amplitude goes up and down at the same time that the volume of the tone goes up and down, and that gives you the feedback that the brain has never had. Now, the brain has feedback about pretty much everything in the body. I can put my hand behind my head and bring together my thumb and each finger, and I don't have to look because I have feedback. Mm -hmm. That feedback allows you to learn, to improve, to perform well. Without feedback, there's no learning. And so what we do is we give the brain uh, feedback on what it's doing so it can learn rapidly. One of the things that it can learn are meditative states. For example, in Japan, Zen is a very popular cultural uh, passion. And um, in fact, much of Japanese culture is reflective of the values of Zen and Zen meditation. Well, it takes between 21 and 40 years for someone in Japan doing Zen in the, both the Soto and the Rinzai traditions of Zen, 
It takes them 21 to 40 years to develop to the state of a master. We know what those brainwaves are. Those exact brainwave patterns are produced by the Alpha One training in just seven days. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> I came in feeling pretty zen, but I'm definitely right now feeling more calm and just overall joy more than I've ever felt before. So thank you for that. Yes. And I want to touch on really quickly too, I know Tony Robbins has gone through mm -hmm. this and he mentioned there's nothing you can't solve in alpha. So what are some last little tidbits you want to talk about on alpha or just bio cybernet in general? Well. Uh, I love Tony very much. When he <laughs> left BioCybernaut, uh, he said it was one of the most valuable things he's done in his life. And he said, Jim, you're permanent family. He is planning to come back in the fall of next year uh, for his Alpha 2. And so uh, there is actually, when he says there's no problem that can't be solved in Alpha, I would say, well, um, there are actually some problems that require theta. Let me give you the difference. In alpha, your mind can go off into the vast storehouse of your memories, even recovering information that you've completely forgotten. But at some time in your life, you were exposed to that information. And so in alpha, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Problem requires bits of information, perhaps assembled in a novel way. In alpha, your brain goes out into your memories, comes back with the information, solves the problem. But if the problem facing you is something that requires information that's not known to you, mm -hmm. or maybe not known to any human in your time period, alpha isn't going to solve it. Mm -hmm. You need to go into theta, which allows you to access the Akashic Records, which is an energetic database of all knowledge that was, is, and will be. Now, that may sound a little mm, sort of new age, um, and Akasha is a Sanskrit word which means primordial substance. Um, but somebody, a, a household name, Thomas A. Edison, Thomas Alva Edison, the inventor of the electric light bulb, had developed pre-technology, a way to access theta to solve problems. And what he would do is he would sleep deprive himself, sleeping only four hours a night, and in two sections. Then during the day, in his lab, he would have a notebook, he knew he wanted to invent something, he would lie in a recliner chair with a big steel ball bearing in each hand, and he would lie back, and under each hand he'd have a large metal pie plate. Mm -hmm. And while thinking of what he wanted to invent, he'd try to fall asleep. As soon as he hits theta, he loses his grip, the balls fall, make a big noise, he wakes up, and he writes down a little piece of the, what the, the invention. And then he would grab the ball, steel ball bearings, and do it again. This was a technique that enabled him to pull enough information out of the Akashic Records to write over 1,000 patents. Ooh. Okay, so somebody that everybody knows, Thomas Alva Edison, the inventor of the electric light bulb, used, he didn't know it, I mean, he was, at, he was using a pre-technology method to access theta, drowsing, falling asleep, and then waking up as soon as he hits theta, to pull information out of the Akashic Records. Now there are people who, and some we've trained, that can make continuous trains of theta, and they can read in the Akashic Records. Some people support themselves, it's their job. They do readings from the Akashic Records for clients. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, yeah, because you have so many different levels here, Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Theta, and it goes all the way. Now, where can somebody learn more about BioCybernet? You can go to the website, www.biocybernaut.com B-I-O-C-Y-B-E-R-N-A-U-T and uh, there are uh, pictures, there's graphs, there's even uh, articles, scientific articles that I publish that people can read there and uh, of course they can also come for training. You're doing Alpha 1, there's 24 levels of the Alpha training, Ooh. each a week long there's 24 levels of the theta training, each a week long, and there's 18 levels of the delta training. Now delta is very interesting because it allows people to, simple word, manifest. The most powerful state for manifesting is delta. Now delta training is by invitation only. People have to have done enough 
alpha and theta trainings to demonstrate a high degree of ethical purity because without that, if they still have anger or fear and they get delta, they could be like a Darth Vader and hurt mm. people or themselves even. Can I get your definition on manifestation? Well, that's a very good question. Um, <laughs> some people would call it doing a work of magic. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie The Secret spoke about how to manifest. And it's interesting, if I may evoke a uh, scene from the movie, there's a little boy, maybe nine or ten, and he wants a red bicycle. And he's got a vision board, he's got pictures of red bicycles. And he's there, he's got the desire, and he's clearly got the confident expectation that he's going to get the red bicycle. And then, cinematically, they show a little green circle over his head that goes pew, and expands out like that. And at that moment, the door opens and here's grandfather wheeling in the red bicycle as a present. And so that's how the movie The Secret illustrates merging. Because to do manifesting or work of magic requires three things, desire, expectation, and merging. Now, everybody has desire. Most people have confident expectation. Doubt kills it. So if you doubt you're going to get what you want, then you'll be right. You probably won't. So we need strong desire, we need confident expectation, and then we need merging. Hmm, now, what is merging? When I studied with, a, with an archdruid, the only definition I was able to get out of him of merging was, he said, merging is when your awareness becomes one with the ground of being. Mm -hmm. Now, that would be like what Martin Buber called the Dasein. However, if you've done it, you go, oh my god, that's, oh yeah, that's so right on. <laughs> and if you haven't done it, you go, ground of being? What's that? <laughs> and so this training has a very effective, very easy way to teach merging, which is a key skill for survival. And that is you listen to the tones and you merge with them. You feel that you and the tones are one. Now before this experience, almost any sound you heard came from outside you. It's not you. It's a symphony orchestra, it's a punk rock band, it's a cricket chirping, it's a canary singing, but it's not you. These sounds are you. They come from deep within your brain. The pacemaker cells for alpha are in the thalamus, sometimes called the brain within a brain because it's so complex. And so our technology picks up this subtle internal signal from deep within your brain and turns it into musical sounds. So even though the sounds are coming to you from outside of you, they're you. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. I really do. I love it there. And on that note, let's have a great day seven. Yes. Thank you so much Wonderful. for this amazing experience. And thank you for sharing with the world. My great Thank you. Awesome. All let's right. go manifest. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>